I'm Jim T. Graham with RC Groups, and you're on the RC Groups Live Hangout because it's Thursday, and that is what we do here. We are the editors and, and the, the some of the people behind rcgroups.com, flyinggiants.com, and I also work, and we uh, own helifreak.com, the heli site. And so the concept of this, if you're new, is uh, we, the people sitting here in these little boxes, we talk about RC stuff every day. There's always something new. There's always a news item. There's always something to review. There's always a plane we're interested in or a quad or this or that. And then one day we all said, why don't we share this with everyone? So that's what you're doing here today. I have two guests, very special, right here behind me. The little one next to the RC Group's logo is Ruby. Ruby is from Houston. Um, I'm not sure what kind of dog she is because they found her living in a stump next to the river. So she raised herself, and when uh, we – oh, I'm going off topic. Let's not get too far yeah. off topic. Uh, and then next to her is uh, Miss Nellie, and Nellie's the craziest dog I've ever owned. And then in the small box to my left, and I'm going to tap on you so you show up, is Matt Gunn. Matt, what's Hi. happening? How y'all doing? You know what uh, time it is. It's 3 p.m. Eastern time, and I got my coffee. Dang. And then we have Mr. Jason Cole, who's not drinking coffee. What's happening, Jason What's Cole? What's up, everybody? I don't need coffee to stay awake. All right. Uh, I, you I, lucky I, I have good vibes. I want to start out on an RC topic right now. Um, I did not write to Anderson to tell them I had on their shirt. Check my shirt out. I'll stand up. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, hold on. Let me get it back to you. All right, all right, all right. Look at that. No, that look. is good. I, I don't know why I love this shirt. Um, they gave it to me at Joe Nall, and I thought I left it because I came home and didn't have it. And uh, I was in the tent at Anderson RC. I had met all the children. I don't know how many Anderson kids there are, but there are a lot. It's got to be 50. So here's my plan. Um, I've been in the RC world, very ingrained, daily basis. It's a full-time job for me. And I have two children that are about to come of marrying age soon. And so what I'm planning on doing is I'm going to marry my kids into the Anderson RC family, and we're going to create a Game of Thrones type dynasty, <laughs> like the Lannisters and uh, what's the North the the Starks that that kind of thing. Nothing ends well in Game of Thrones. Be careful if you. Uh, <laughs> nothing ends well in the Anderson oh, RC family. Right. Kidding. Kidding. Okay, so the first topic for RC today is the term rubber ducky, and I bring this up because I uh, I have a classifieds ads, and somebody was asking me about antennas, and I'm just leisurely typing. Comes with two rubber duckies, and then my brain said, Jim, is that a real term? Is this something I made up? Where? Why do people use this term rubber ducky? So I was thinking for the podcast, you too might wonder. Why do they call this a rubber ducky? And I looked it up, and the answer is insane. Anyone here think they know why you call a uh, 5.8 uh, antenna here. rubber ducky? Here. Well, it was any, right any like, long whip antenna, right? I don't have no idea why it's called that, though. I never understood why it was called a rubber duck. Here it is right here, by the way. That's the antenna in question, right? Yeah, and now let's talk about why these are – they're good because they're rugged. You can't really kill it. But they're bad because they're linear in nature and don't receive as much signal as you would like. No, no, they no, no, no. Uh, they they have uh, they accept too much multipathing. That's the problem. So they allow um, signals that are bouncing off the trees, the walls, the houses, the mountains, whatever is uh, the signal is bouncing off and coming back 180 degrees. It allows right. that. It doesn't reject the interference. Okay. Now it will depend on your scenario because they do have a higher gain DV yeah. gain. So this monitor, for instance, uh, when I'm flying my tiny whoop, which I'll talk about in a little bit uh, around the house, if tiny I tiny whoop a, coming up, if I put a uh, circular polarized on this, I get banding and all kinds of weird lines oh, and wow. stuff. But if I put this one on in my house, at least, I get mm -hmm. a whole lot better reception, and it's probably due to the higher gain of this antenna. That's right. If you're doing long range stuff, uh, the uh, linear polarization is great. So the the rubber duck antenna became uh, it it kind of was invented in the 60s and it was an uh, antenna for walkie talkie. So you know when we were kids we had those antennas you'd pull up and then immediately break and then stick a clothes hanger in there or yeah. something. They say that the origin of the name rubber ducky, which is why I'm talking about this, 
Uh, the daughter of President J John F. Kennedy named the device when she pointed at an agent's transceiver and said, rubber ducky. Nice. Wow, that's crazy. Hey, here's that, your... Here's your uh, yeah, um, that would be a real rubber ducky. Yeah. Uh, technically, Ooh. these 5.8 receivers are stiff and they're not rubberized and flexible. Like this is the opposite of stiff. <laughs> nice. All right, yeah. so this is my first RC topic of the day. Uh, we also want to say hey to all our live viewers. If you hang out for a little bit, we'll come up with something to give away to a live viewer. So uh, stay tuned. Uh, one of us will come up with an idea of something that you guys can walk home with. Macum, what is your... RC topic of the day. Or, well, you know. I got a couple things. I don't. I know we talk a lot about FPV, so let's go ahead and talk some more about FPV. Um, I have been using these electrodynamic uh, multi-click uh, connectors for a long time now. So these give you the option of taking all those crazy wires that you have running in and out of your wings when you use multiple servos, and uh, just connecting it so it's just one single connection. Between nice. the wing, I love them so much, and they are uh, about twenty bucks depending on which size you get, which flavor. This one's the three in, three out, and it ha is available in JR Futaba and um, yeah, JR Futaba and uh, yeah, that's it, the two different kinds. So you have uh, that. This one's about eighteen bucks. The four out is about twenty bucks. And I have discovered that these things are just perfect for FPV. So, in the wing of my full size of my Sky Hunter, here we have um, a single multi connect right there with three in, uh, three out. So, in my wing, I have the uh, VTX on one side, and I have servos for the elevator because it's a twin boom and I have servo for the aileron. So I can do all three with one simple connection and I would highly recommend these for complex FPV machines. That's because, cool. Yeah, they make life so much easier, man. I mean, it's like I used to sit and take five, six, seven minutes just putting the plane together oh. and, and and connecting all the things. Now it's just one click and I'm done. And where'd I'm you get those? Uh, these are from uh, Electrodynamics, our good buddies at uh, Electrodynamics. They are, I think they're advertisers with this, at, and and they uh, sent me some of these for some reviews that I'm doing. I put them in all my big model airplane reviews. Dude, uh, I am so glad we do this because I did not know that existed, and that is a must-have <coughs> item. So I agree. And cool. it, comes in, it comes in two, uh, three, and four. No mm -hmm. bigger than that. So good stuff from Electrodynamics. Andy sent these to me. Uh, Andy runs Electrodynamics. They have all sorts of good stuff. So a lot, they're mostly giant scale, but they do a lot. But uh, as you can see, it bleeds over into different aspects of our hobby. Hey, speaking of uh, little things like that, we were on the phone this morning with DJI, and he was. We we're talking to Tahoe Ed. He was telling us about a new product DJI came out with. Uh, Jason, I actually went and looked on their site for a news button to find out about this ESC. It's a racing ESC. Did yeah. you find anything out about it? I haven't seen, haven't got an email yet about it. Um, but so he's talking about they just announced today somewhere, we haven't seen it yet, uh, a new multi-rotor racing uh, speed controller. It's supposed to be kind of DJI's own design, but it will, you know, it's high speed, obviously. Um it's supposed to be good for racers. It's got uh, some unique programming features to it. So instead of having to hook a programmer up or switch wires that you've soldered to it, um, you somehow you enter a program mode and you can just turn the prop in the direction that you want it to rotate, and then that sets the direction. How about that, Matt? What do you think about that? Cool. I've always liked being able to um, to turn your – what other ESCs or what other flight controllers do that, Jason? This isn't brand new, but I do like when you can spin the rotor or spin the uh, propeller and motor at the direction and define yeah. the direction. It's pretty cool. So. And then I've uh, I've seen uh, – oh, what else did he say? He said they have reversing pitch – not pitch, but reverse direction. So you can use it for your uh, 3D aerobatic guys that want to do – Inverted flight, you know, TikToks, helicopter type maneuvers, it'll and do I, that as well. So some of, some of that discussion may have been uh, may have not been public, but we did bring up 
Well, I, I was asking about DJI and why I don't see any really killer uh, FPV quad racing quads coming out of there. So that would be pretty interesting if they started going that direction at some point. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. You know, I was talking to DJI years ago, and I mean like 2011, and they said that they were gonna they were on the brink of announcing a fixed wing flight controller to compete with their Ace One and. Um, and uh, you know the the NASA that came out shortly after the Ace One and uh, the Wukong actually came out first before the NASA, yeah. but it never happened. You know, so when you said something was coming down the pipeline, I really initially thought, <laughs> oh my God, a fixed wing controller. It's here. Yeah, but I don't think it's just as popular as um, you know. It's still sort of niche. Fixed wing FPV. Yeah. So kind of got dwarfed by the multi rotors. Uh, but it's coming, and we. And I agree. Coming. I agree with you, Jim. I, I. It's already here. Echo your statement quite often that that the fixed wing revolution is back and going, and and I'm enjoying it, but eh, uh, maybe not the flight controller from DJI. Well, you know, Castle. If you're an OG RC person, you know that Castle dominated the ESC scene. It was quality product and all that, and then they kind of just kind of. Petered off. Yeah, they just kind of went away, and so when uh, multi rotors and quads really broke out, I was like, ah, oh, well, here's a whole new market for Castle to take advantage of, and it's amazing that we don't have a singular pinnacle ESC type of brand that uh, is a go-to. Yeah, it, it is a vastly different world. If there's any like single brand that you would call out, it would probably be Kiss. Um, they have some of the best speed controllers, most highly sought after stuff. What about, but what about well, motors? Like motors, T-Motor, Venom? Uh, the problem with the multi-rotor racing world is it changes so fast. So whatever the hot motor is this week will be different in two weeks. Um, it changes so fast, and there's a constant flood of new, improved, new designs coming out, new products all the time in this world. The speed controllers are one example of that. There's, there's generic speed controllers, but then it comes down to the code that they support. If it's got one shot, one twenty-five, or multi-shot, right, right. or Simon K, there's, it's just changes at such a fast pace. I don't think you're going to see, at least not for a while, a singular kind of no. brand dominating that market. It's just too quickly done to be able to keep up with it as a big company. So, do you think that's good for? I mean, on the it would seem that it would be great for us, the consumer, to have all these great options at great prices. But like you say, everything's changing; it's always different. Um, I know it's hard on a company who knows that whatever they bring out now will be done in four months. It won't be cool anymore, and they'll have to figure out what the next cool thing. Yeah, it's it's really got to be a challenge for them, especially with the minimum order quantities that some of the manufacturers have. They may. Right. That might be a six month to a year supply, but the market for that particular product may only be a month. You know, so it's it's really got to be tricky for the for the uh, companies out there that are trying to sell this stuff and, and to keep up with what's what's in right now because that's a big deal. Do you guys remember the boom from last year, the big VTX boom? That was like it seemed like it sort of died late last year where. All these companies were coming out with crazy 5.8 VTXs, and there was all sorts of different types. 1.2 got pushed way to the back, yeah. and you don't you don't even see anything really new in the 1.2. And then um, uh, everybody was coming out with 5.8, including the remember this guy I did the review on the Drac. Yeah, uh, it's a, the adjustable. I really had a good, good, good uh, experience with this VTX. I have one in my. Um, uh, Sky Surfer up there, and it was—it's just a great performing little little guy. But it's sort of like they there was this huge boom where all the companies were jumping on board, including Ready Made RC, and then Buddy RC, and all these companies were putting out uh, VTXs, and then it just sort of slowed down. And, and like a few years prior to that, it was like 300 milliwatt, 600 milliwatt, 800 milliwatt, 1,000 milliwatt, and then More power. everybody was like, hey guys, you're blanking out the whole county, you know, so now, <laughs> it's, now it's high quality and lower milliwatt. So one thing I will say, this unit back here, it's still my favorite, the Surfer 1500, mm -hmm. um, and I've gone through a lot of airplanes between this and now. Um, when I find a video transmitter that works consistently and also um, 
it's always given me a good signal. It works in all my, the environments I take it to. It seems like a rare thing to actually stumble upon. So I will hang on to favorites, video transmitters. Yeah. And like that one will not leave that plane until one day I find something that I think is better. <laughs> sort of like that in goggles, right? Yeah, totally. I mean, well, I don't want to go too far into that. I'm still waiting on the ultimate set of goggles. Yeah. Well, can I, can I show you guys something else that I got? Yeah. Um, this this isn't again. This is another cheap trick. Huh, that was a good band, cheap. wasn't it? Yeah. So I'm gonna break out once again the. Um, Sky Hunter because this is the first one I used it on. So if you look on the bottom here, uh, it got a little bit beat up uh, on a land. This was literally the maiden of this Sky Hunter. It took a hit, and I'm like, what can I put on the bottom of this thing that won't um, won't allow it to get scratched and you get dirty? You don't have landing gear. You don't have the landing gear. Uh, no, no landing gear, man. Too much drag, and this thing's designed to belly land. So if I put landing gear, it'd be a massive structural reinforcement inside. Yeah. So oh, maybe I'm thinking of another airplane. I thought it came stock with tricycle gear. Negative. Okay. Maybe uh, sticks of butter. You just uh, sticks of butter on the bottom. Yeah. So I was like, well, I'll use the um, the laminate that comes with like uh, the Zephyr and the right wing Stocky planes. Land. That stuff that you iron on and it's totally clear, but it doesn't take a hit. So it may it may keep your plane from getting scuffed on the bottom, but it'll still tear, right? So enter this stuff right here. This is 3M. Um, uh, what is this? 3M. Laminate? Sco no, 3M Scotch Bright. Oh yeah. The front of cars. This is like a uh, a bra that you. It's like a clear, completely clear stuff that you put on it's got sticky back on it and it comes off like really easily so if you put it on it'll stay put until you want to peel it off and when you that's the thing it's like 10 mil so not millimeters it's 10 mil so whereas the uh, the really thin other the really thin um, iron on or uh, heat transfer film is like three and five mil and the really thick stuff is eight mil this stuff is 10 mil and it's like rubber. So when you peel it off, you can stretch it around stuff and stick it down and it won't crease. So if you look on the bottom, I have it all over. You can see the line right there uh, of where where it is. So look at that. It goes. It covers up all of that. That's the um, um, battery strap coming Spare through. Spare pack of gum. That you yeah, can. so... <laughs> So it really works incredibly well, and I thought, and in, in I try it when I landed with the first time on here. It's literally like a Teflon coating. This thing slid on the grass <laughs> all the way down. It is it's so skeg, slick, man. It is. It's so slick now on the bottom, and it's protected from punctures because I would always get punctures from like little twigs and pieces of grass and stuff. Yeah. yeah. But it, it's hard to see. But all I did right here was just push it in with my fingers and go across it, and it's stuck, and it hasn't come up since I put it on because it's like a rubber coating. And so I paid, I went on eBay, and I put 3M Scotch-Brite um, protectant, and it comes up, and so I bought this at 6 inches by 60 inches for $18. Now, it's not cheap, but if you can put this on, you can put this on the bottom of any plane and increase the life of it exponentially if it's a plane that lands without landing gear. You can put it out on the wingtips like just as little scuff patches and it doesn't weigh much. So I thought I would show you guys this cool stuff and uh, nice. yeah, it actually works. So good stuff. Oh, you know, I was thinking it was the Anaconda. That's the one that has Yeah, you're gear right. Yeah, the Anaconda. Around. It's got a that, same like fuselage pod like that. Dude, that thing's one step from being like uh, surveillance quality. Yeah, seriously. Uh huh. It's big too, man. Uh huh. It's big, man. I did the review on that. So, Matt Gunn, tell us about these two little. So, Dromeda from Hobbico. I, I've owned all the little Dromeda quads, and they're moderately tough. Tough enough. Tough enough to get you through an entry. Are they tough enough? Sorry. I think <laughs> the guy that wrote that. I think I know that guy. Hang and tough. Down the street. <laughs> Jason, that was awesome. <laughs> Let's talk about the drama of planes. Dang, I was trying to get a tough lyric. I'm usually pretty good at that. So anyway, <laughs> we like, win, Matt. We beat him. Yeah, you did. Music. 
<laughs> so uh, Dromeda had all the little quads, and then they just came out with the XL Dromeda, which I was like, wait, shouldn't I be getting that? But I guess we uh, Nikolai Zinsley, uh, and I said his name right for the first time ever. Dromeda. Uh, yeah, uh, Dromeda, that's right. Dromeda. Kanada. They make it up in Kanada. But uh, they also came out with some cars, the Dromeda cars. So you remember their, they had their Apocalypse series. You remember those, the ones that shot the stuff that yeah. just came out? So they yeah. had those. Now they got a couple of rally racers. Yeah, as I was going to send that to you. I guess you get that for the car channel. But Jason, when the two little uh, new Dromeda things came out, there's a twin, and then one looks like an Easy Star. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I wrote like FPV plane. Havico, and they sent me the email, and I said, send us two. So what I'm so, thinking... Let's share. Let's share screen, and I'll show you. Yeah. I, got them, I got them pulled up right now. So here they are. Um, ba, 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 ba. Full screen. Screen share. Here we are. I'm gonna Can you guys see this little one. I'm gonna present you. Presenting. You guys can see. Yep. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So we got the two new uh, planes from Dromeda. One's the Twin Explorer, which is right here on the left. If you're looking at the screen. And is then you it, have uh, is that uh, motor control for direction, or does it have a rudder? It doesn't look like it has a rudder. It does not say that it has um, thrust. Um, differential thrust. Differential oh. thrust, thank you. Pretty yeah, it sure. No, it says it has rudder and elevator. The Easy Star elevator. has its own transmitter. I don't know about the twin. They both do. They both have their own transmitters. Yeah, well, one is like 39 bucks, and one is 99 bucks. So here's the Twin Explorer. And it's got two little brushed motors right there on the edges. And there's the transmitter that it comes with and a little tiny 1S pack. Ooh, I have a lot of those. And a USB charger. And uh, it looks like a fun little learn-to-fly machine, you know. I mean, literally, you could launch that in the front yard or during the indoor season, which is kind of what I was touting in the article, that with the upcoming uh, indoor season with E-Fest and stuff like that coming up, it's going to be oh, nice cool. to see these. Now, here's the cool one. Uh, they're both cool, but here's the one that <laughs> here's the one that you're talking about. Now this is the Sky Surfer esque design. They call it the Sky Cruiser Two. It's actually got a folding prop on the back of it. Look at that. Nice. I know, I don't right? Know if I have an FPV unit small enough for that, I'm yeah, not. Yeah, I think you do. You got a little those. Pico uh, ready-made RC Cricket mm -hmm. stuff. Put those not, on there. I've got that, but it's on my mud skipper. I don't know if I want to pull it off. Oh uh, well. You could maybe, maybe, maybe fit one of those um, tactic units on there. Might be a little heavy. Oh, that's a, that's a pretty good idea. Well, so it maybe. comes with a 2S um, 300 milliamp lipo, and this one's got a wall wart charger on it. So right yeah. here, so 2S 300. I don't have any of those. <laughs> I don't know many people that do. That's a yeah. tiny little battery for yeah. 2S, isn't it? Jason, that's what I run in my DLGs, and the, but they're way smaller than that. Jason, yeah. you know when we were we did our, our Dramita quad video and <laughs> Dramita Dramitas and uh, at the at the uh, brewery? No, at the brewery? field where we were flying them out. Oh, yeah, that was all around. It was fun and easy. And so when these two things came out, I I thought, well, let's get a pair and go to the field, and we'll just fly the living teeth. I thought we'd fly them through the uh, the uh, protection there at the field. Yeah. Maybe are we getting, are we getting the, one of each or two of the cool ones? We're just getting. I said, send me a pair. I wasn't very specific. <laughs> I could get more specific, I guess. I, when I sent it, I didn't realize that they were vastly different. And then I went back and looked, and I was like, oh. So I guess we'll have to see. We'll see. You can FPV in both, literally. So. It's... But I was thinking we could fly it on ourselves and jump in the air and fly underneath our feet. Yeah. We'll have you better fly. You better fly uh, with no wind at all. I know you guys, uh, flying field can get windy at times, but those little planes will get pushed around. I, in the wind. I may have a lead on an indoor flying facility that might be about right size for something like that. When's the last time we flew at our field when there was no wind? Um, Once in the last, last three years. Yeah, it's we've had some good weather. Got to go out at like six in the morning or eight in the evening. Yeah. Jason and I stay up to like three in the morning working on planes, so we don't get up early. Dude, your dog looks like a hog in mud back there. Look at that thing. Hold on, let's do a screen share. Look at that dog. Ruby Sue. Ruby. Holy moly. Nelly. Oh, you Ruby. got your headphones on. Hey. What's up, y'all? 
<laughs> I'll come over and see you, Jim. Come here now. Come up. Come up here. Come up. Uh, uh, this dog. There we go. Oh, oh. she loves me. She oh loves yeah. Me. Oh, that's good breath you got there. That's some awesome breath. Isn't she handsome? That's a good looking pooch. She'd kill you if you came in the house, though. She is ferocious. She looks like she's got some chompers in there. Well, we've made it through the first part of the podcast. Would y'all like to hear my Pokemon story? Yes. <laughs> so every uh, live podcast, I usually have a story, and this is RC related, but not in a good way. Um, I'm, I'm coming to stepping out over the line a little bit. I'm going to share a little bit of my RC experience. I usually don't share. Every now and then, somebody on RC groups makes a threat. So I got a threat about two weeks ago, and the guy said a lot of things to me. Uh, none of them were very coherent or sane, but one of them was that he was coming to Nashville in July and going to find me. Mm -hmm. so, so this isn't very funny, but uh, this does happen periodically where people say they're going to come. And find That's me. hilarious. Oh, damn. <laughs> what? Uh. So anyway, um, it's, you know, Whatever. A lot of things in life can happen to you. That's just one of them. Anyway, if you're sitting where I'm sitting, right in front of me is a window. And this is my office. And the window is level with the ground. And there is a walking path that's probably, let me get in the camera, this wide. And then there's a creek. So there's not much room between me and the creek. Just enough. And no one is ever there. The only time I see something there, it's a cat, a bird, and the other day I saw two deer. A okay. cat burglar. So, I'm sitting here at my desk. It's going to end on a funny note. It does not end on a bad note. Hyper vigilant, and a full grown man. Oh, not, you didn't not, tell me this. I haven't told anybody this. I was saving it for the podcast. <laughs> a full grown man. La la la. I'm Jim. I'm returning emails and taking care of your username. And la la la. What the what? A full grown man is in front of my window. <laughs> And he's not just leisurely walking or checking the gas meter. He's running at a full sprint. <laughs> he's, oh, my God. So, Got to catch okay. them all, man. I immediately <laughs> went on full alert, and I said, I at least need to watch this full-grown man on my property where no one should be. I at least need to see him run off my property, right? And in the back of my mind, I'm thinking maybe I'm getting paid that visit. Or maybe, maybe you should go grab the AR. <laughs> I, uh. I always, I'm always moderately prepared, if you know what I mean. I am running up the steps. There's stairs. I am hauling buttocks. I run through the living room. Usually there's family members that see this when it happens. When I uh, Usually it's a dog, and I go catch them. Before when you have a shit. DEFCON 4 scare daily? Yeah. And they, well, about once a month. The squirrels and are infiltrating my perimeter. If I see a cat or a dog walk by, I will run out and grab it before it gets in the street, and then I'll find the owner and return it. That's usually why I'm running. Wow, what a humanitarian. That's, actually, that's a felinitarian. Anyway. This, this time, it was a dude, a man. So as I'm running up, and y'all know I have a son with, uh, with uh, autism. As I'm yep. running up, I hear the front door open and the screen open, and I realize at this point that my son is going out in the front yard at the same time a man I don't know is running down the side of my house. Uh -oh. I move from DEFCON 4 to whatever the major yeah, that's is. That's called launch the nukes after DEFCON 4. I fly out the front door just as this guy rounds the corner, and it's not my son, it's my daughter, and it's not a random man coming to get me. It's a neighbor kid who grew into adult size. Whoa. So I actually knew who the kid was. He just is six feet tall now and has muscles. <laughs> and uh, they both look at me, and I'm, I'm out the door now panting. <sighs> and I'm looking at them, and they're like, what? And I said, dude, I almost had a machete on you. <laughs> and uh, they were like, huh, okay, Dad. And then I went back in the house and de-escalated here in the office. They were Pokemoning in the they back. Were, oh, yeah, I, I didn't get to end the story. <laughs> he was chasing a Pokemon yes. that yes, was next to my house, and that's why he was running. That's awesome. Oh, so, man. I don't know where they're going to pop up. Mixed that Pokemon emotions stuff about can get that. dangerous. It can, it can. It is the... Uh, I mean, that's how you go. Number one, they went to a, like a billion-dollar industry basically overnight. They increased the their 
their net worth or whatever. But uh, I'm I'm on the fence about it, man. I, I love video games. I love all all sorts of stuff like that. I I'm not going to get into Pokemon Go. We and have I'm no little, business chasing Pokemon. But it's Pokemon. great to see why like pasty uh, computer nerd kids out in life. Yes. Like 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 they're what. Did you see like the guy who's the he's collecting Pokemon's? He's put his phone on his drone on his drone yeah. on his quad and yeah. he's flying around with his quad. Fl- I read the article. They were he's flying slow enough to trick it to where because if you get in a car, it doesn't work. It just, you know so you have to be walking. So he's flying at a slow enough pace to trick the the app into thinking um, that he's walking, which totally defeats the entire purpose. Of getting out and getting exercise, and like way to cheat it, bro. You know, he's using that brain now. <laughs> Jason, yeah, what's on your RC list today, man? Well, I I uh, did an article on 3D printed cases. Yes. This is a cool box, and when you open it up. Oh yeah. Inside is the tiny whoop. Tiny case for a tiny whoop. So it holds uh. Four, five, six batteries. Seven if you put one in the copter. Um, there's two underneath, and then you get four up top. And uh, it's awesome, you know, so it's easy to deal with. And then the other thing I got for my tiny whooping addiction is the high tech X4. Bought what? that. Look at that. Um, Have we done a review on that? We haven't done a review on it. I don't know. Man, you I should bought at least just do a video. Ready made RC, but. That's you know what awesome. you need to go with all this tiny whoop stuff? You need a tiny chair, folding mm-hmm. chair. Like Not here. a tiny folding chair. That'd be awesome. You know, and I got the tiny whoop uh, fanny pack. <laughs> <laughs> so it holds a charger and the tiny whoop, and then the batteries go on like bullets. It's all leather. It's awesome. But if you're serious about whooping, you know, you can do four <laughs> at a time. You've got adjustable charge rates. Uh, individual stuff. You don't have to do parallel charging and try to make sure the voltages are matched or series cables or whatever. This is just like 46 bucks or something and makes it nice and easy and you can charge them, you know, one, one and a half, two C and uh, be safe but still, you know, get it charged a whole lot faster than using the little USB chargers. Um, so that's cool. Hey, Jason, I found something for oh, you. Oh, and I also have a PSA here in a minute. What'd you find? Uh, a tiny chair. Tiny chair. <laughs> yeah. I like it. This is my this is my cell phone holder. Yeah. It's called it's so, the tiny chair for the tiny whoop. <laughs> uh, fellas, fellas. Um, yeah. just a just a little public service announcement here and a word PSA of time. Warning. Where'd Jim go? He needs uh, to do this. Something tiny. Oh. I'm not gonna say anything. <laughs> Dang, dude. Woo. I'm getting it today. All right. So PSA. Uh, you know, tiny whoops are awesome, right? You can fly them around. You can get in tight spaces. You can fly them around your house. Um, so don't sneak up on your wife when she's in the shower, everybody, and fly these okay. into the shower. Well, I'm going to have to see footage on that to really know. <laughs> you took the words out of my mouth, dude. Video or it didn't happen. So, uh, and the other thing to worry about is, uh, say you are flying in the, the shower with your wife, uh, it is analog video, so anybody with a receiver and is just happen to be scanning the channels can uh, see what you're seeing. So be careful out there, folks. That, that might be a problem at like an, a ready-made RC event, but I don't think at home you're going to have any issues. <laughs> I don't know. I've got neighbors that fly drones and stuff, so I was like, oh, really? hmm, I should be careful. <laughs> oh, my God. But do they have a DVR? Yeah, who knows? I don't you, know, know. you never know. Matt, you and I say we're living the dream, but you know who's really living the dream? That guy. Jason Cole's living the dream. Oh, baby. You know why you're living the dreams? Because you don't have rug rats running around that take take your time. Well, you have a dog. It's sort yeah, of a rug rat. Molly, she's a handful. And chill yeah, right, our future. Please. <laughs> please. Oh, people that say, oh, my dogs, and, you know, just have a All kid, right. man. Have a kid. So, so my wife left. Like permanently, she'll be back tomorrow. But they, uh, she left for the week to go to Florida with my daughter. So it's only been my son and I at home. It's a batch pad. Pretty awesome. I put up a pirate flag today in the front that. yard. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, you have totally. It's like the SS Graham yard meeting. I'm like, we're gonna eat spaghetti for lunch and dinner. Okay. 
And uh, I think I'm going to Photoshop a campfire in the living room tonight and put that on Facebook and have Truman and I sitting around a campfire in the living room. Uh, you both uh, should put your hands out like you're getting warmth from it. Maybe uh, hot dogs or something. That's a good idea. S'mores. For the wife. Yeah. Should I talk about these? Yeah. yeah okay, I want to I wanna go over this real quick and then uh, hand it over to you. I need magnification in my goggles. That's just how it is. Me and like half at least of the pup public out there that fly FPV need to be able to magnify our things because we're not 28 years old or 22 years old. And all the new goggles don't allow it, don't have it, and don't even make it so I can rig it. Now, with that said, there's a new set of goggles out, and I have hopes. But only Jason Cole has the answers. Jason Cole, give us your update on the newest set of goggles to the FPV world. Well, okay, so these are the Eoshin Goggles 1. That's, that's, oh, that's a great, great <laughs> name. Sounds very American. Goggles 1. So I was really excited about these before I got them and was thinking this would be like my head play replacement kind of if I don't want something as big as the head plays, even though it's still kind of big, right? And, and let me say, Ishin, I call it Ishin, but maybe it's Ishin makes really nice, well-thought-out product. Yeah. I have that. And so, okay, it's a 5-inch screen. The, the awesome part of this is it's a 1080p you know resolution display where most of the displays in lower end video goggles are much much lower and not as high quality right so this is a high quality really nice display which and I was like all right tell them why there. you like the five as opposed to a bigger screen yeah so the field of view is is not as large as a seven inch monitor like the head plays where that's like a 72 degree field of view this I don't know what the actual degrees are right now, but it's it's smaller, right? So some people complain with the head plays that it's too big. It's like IMAX and it's too much information. Looking around. You don't know where to look, right? So this is kind of a, a smaller size, so that should be better suited for those people that have that issue. Um, so I like that. Um, when I got them, I pulled them out of the box, I was like, hmm, it's, it's kind of cheesy, plastic, cheap feeling, right, and looking... And it, I think I know what's going on. I'm not sure if this is a production model or a prototype. I do need to kind of ask that question uh, via email here. But uh, it's got like this stick-on plastic outer casing. It's foam underneath. So um, it's a protector. And it's like this protector, and it's just it's like looks like it's hand cut. The fit and finish isn't that great. It doesn't look that great. The little um. Yeah, to make connector to get to it. How is, do you is, even use them? If you I don't even know how you would be able to tighten down the base on that at can the, the moment. Can the plastic piece come off? I, I will. Pro I might try to rip it off eventually, but it does. Like you can, you can see it. Uh, you know, poking out. Right. Did it come with with any good antennas? Uh, I came with a, a linear. Rubber a, ducky. Sweaters. Rubber ducky. Um, now the screen does look awesome when I put it on. It looks great. Um, it's got HDMI in. It doesn't have audio video in, so you're not. Oh, gonna, that's you're one lucky. of the deal breakers, kind of thing, right? You need to be able to plug in a ground station, especially for racing. Some of yeah. the quasi quad uh, things you have to hook into. Um, you need to have audio video in, but it does have HDMI in. So when the HD stuff is finally fully fleshed out and and mass market available, uh, you'll be able to use these with HD stuff, and it's going to look brilliant. Um, but the you know the other issue it comes with a it comes with two batteries and they're smart batteries. Um, let me see if I can grab one here. It's got a cool box. You know the box looks great. Um, so the batteries. Yeah, but you can't FPV the box, bro. Well, well you, you can. Go ahead. It's a sixteen hundred milliamp hour battery. It's a little two cell, and then it's got uh, you know little uh, smart lipo that, kind of thing. Is that proprietary or is that a GST? No, it's it's a barrel plug, kind of like Fat Sharks and everything else. Um, uh, I'm not. I, this is a general comment, not meant directly at that. I hate barrel plugs. Yeah, yeah that makes sense. Uh, because too. they tend to the connection starts to get weird, and then uh, when you have intermittent, uh, you know, barrel plug problems, when's it not going to work? You know, and I'm right. really mean it. Yeah, it can't happen. So, you know, I haven't used these yet for real flying, but when if you, it's hard to really show this with the lighting and stuff in here. But you can kind of see there how the nose piece is kind of all smushed foam together. There's a Looks good plush. Yeah. So it's fairly comfortable, but when I stick this on, um, 
it kind of pinches my nose and makes me talk. You are nasal, and, and I have to breathe through my mouth, and <laughs> so it's a little bit. I, I don't know, and if like I put my nose below it to where it's I can breathe and talk normal, it still pinches the nose a little bit, and then you're missing part of the screen. You can't see it all, and then if you put it up to where it's not pinching your nose. Uh, you're breathing right into the screen, <laughs> That's a design which can flaw. cause fogging. But, however, I will say, I haven't, you know, I, I just got this, right, so I haven't been out and tested it yet, so I can't really comment on a lot of things about it yet. But there is, uh, if you can see, there's some vent holes. It does have a fan, and so when you power it on, you do hear the fan going. So that's kind of a cool feature that it's going to help keep everything from fogging up inside, um, in theory. So we'll have to see how that works, but... You know, it's nice and light. It feels good and comfortable on your head besides the nose thing. So, I mean, I can probably fix that. I can probably cut away some of this foam here and, and resolve that issue. But it just feels, with the plastic casing and stuff on the outside, it feels like a not finished product. So this may just quite, you know, possibly be a prototype that they just sent us out to check out. So I, I know they kept pushing the release on changes yeah. they were making, so this yeah. could be... And one of the things they were talking about because of that was the shell, the outer shells. They had to rework that. So maybe uh, maybe there'll be something different for production. I'll find out. We're going to do a you know, whole review on it and stuff, and I'll have all that information there. Well, I do so, like that screen. I'm, I'm uh, you know, torn when I use my um, head plays about, you're right, it's a 720p 7-inch screen. And you literally have to look from one side to the other, and then using our analog signals at 480, uh, even if it is a uh, 700 TVL camera, it still makes it really blurry. You know? Yeah. So now I've flown, uh, I've flown with my head plays using my Inspire with the HDMI, and it looks brilliant. It looks really good, but it surely wouldn't be as nice and crisp as a 1080p 5 inch. Right. Now it did have me thinking. Uh, you know, what if? Because I, I was real excited about these, thinking it was going to be the next like big thing or whatever, and and uh, you know, so I'm like, man, what what really would it take to be my perfect FPV goggles? So I was thinking, I was like, okay, it'd be like a a four and a half to five inch screen, probably. It probably can go even a little bit smaller than five, um, based on the size. Um, has to be a high res 1080p at least screen. Needs to have audio video in. Needs to have HDMI in. Needs to have audio video out. Uh, it has to have a DVR built in. It has to in. have a DVR. And um, diopters and adjustable diopters for Jim. Yeah, I could take I could leave that. But Yeah, me too. Uh, it has to be really comfortable, you know, and it has to look okay. It can't be You know what else yeah. I would like? I'd like a built in LiPo with an external option. So I can yeah. charge my goggles ahead of time and if they go out I can plug in it. One hundred percent. That's why I use this little thing for my um, uh, tiny whooping because it's got a built-in battery. I just hit the button and turn it on. Yep. Mm -hmm. And it's just so convenient. So, I, yeah, I don't want to have to have a second battery that I swap it out and plug in. I, I want that option if I need it for yeah. a long-term day event or something, you know, and I run out of battery. Um, it's nice to have that option, but it's just hit the button, turn it on, and go. So, anyway, yeah. that's what it would take, I think, for me to have a perfect FPV set of goggles, but... I wonder who's going to cobble one or build some open source goggles that's powered by like a Raspberry Pi or something, right? And can you imagine like this all all in one uh, set of goggles that has the resolution, has the optimal field field of view that isn't like <clears throat> you have to look left and right just to see your OSD on either side? Yeah, it'd no, be nice thing, to have that. Sorry, sorry, didn't mean to cut you off there, Matt. No, I'm done. Did we lose so, Jim? I I missed one thing. No, he's still there. Uh -huh. Um. I would like to have uh, selectable receivers or optional receivers, kind of like, like that charge too with the modules. I mm -hmm. want to be able to put in a 1.3 module, yeah. or since they're so much bigger than Fat, fat Shark stuff, you know, have both built in and be able to select AV1 is 5.8 receiver diversity, AV2 is a 1.3, and you just have your antennas, whatever, just. That would be awesome. That way I wouldn't have to have a separate kind of 1.3 ground station uh, with a pole or something. I could just have it right there built in. That would be awesome. Because 1.3 is still alive and well, everybody. Yeah, it is. Uh, I have a dream you. of going there one day. Boom. Oh, I love it. So what you got there, Jim? All right, all right. I got permission to talk about this, and then it went live anyway. So this is interesting. Um, I've 
I heard about things like this in the past. You never know if it's really going to happen or not, but I thought it would be good fodder for the uh, broadcast. International casting call for drone builders and pilots. Do you build and fly drones? Are you a master mechanic or, or a precision pilot? Would you like $10,000? Well, I think the answer to all of those is yes. <laughs> Award-winning production company, Hoplite Entertainment, is casting a new TV series where two-person teams build and fly drones and conquer challenges. To win cash, prizes, and glory, competitors will be compensated. So I heard that uh, I talked to the guy doing this. You're going to be paid. There's like a daily rate, and they take care of your expenses and your, I guess your travel and everything. You need a passport. Um, do they tell you where you're going here? Because I know where they're going to fly you. Just says you have to have the passport. You know, I don't have the email in front of me, but I'm pretty sure they said they're flying you to Croatia. Hmm. Oh, yeah. I'm pretty intimate with Croatia. I have a friend who lives there, and I know sometimes it's not the most awesome country. I mean, <laughs> things happen in Croatia. <laughs> I'm, I'm picking up what you're putting down. Yeah, but maybe now it's okay, but I'm pretty sure that's the country they want to ship you to. Yeah. I think it's interesting they're shipping people there. I don't understand why unless the production company's there or there's zero laws about quadcopters. I don't know, man. I would be afraid to do this because I think my wife would divorce me if I was gone from mid-August through October. This is mostly for 20-year-old guys. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, you guys, I don't know if you guys know this or not, but I was nearly cast for a show like this about a year ago or so. Um, the same guys that do BattleBots mm -hmm. were working on a drone show, and it was a uh, UK production team, and they had several uh, teams um, submit videos and things, and we got in, and we had several callback interviews and private uh, Skype interviews and things, and, and they really liked us, and... Uh, we were in, and they got their funding pulled, so the show never happened. But it was going to be like a junkyard wars, battle bots type thing, where you 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 had an engineer, a pilot, um, a team leader, all this kind of stuff, and they were going to do a a kind of a underground thing where you went into a uh, like an abandoned shop, abandoned mall. So what role did you want? Stuff. I was going to be the pilot. Uh, of course. Yeah, man. Oh uh, yeah. I have big news. I actually cool. was hired by an RC company. Um, it's I travel around the country, cover events, work with like-minded RC pilots, <laughs> um, review products. It's crazy. And uh, it's called rcgroups.com. <laughs> the most and, active. And the world's largest and most active RC website. I can never get that right. I will work for this company for 10 years, if, if God willing, and I will never be able to nail that slogan. Yep. Why? Well, it's not 10 years, but this year, this month is my three-month anniversary working for RC Groups, everybody. Three months. Woo! That's awesome. Woo Whoops. Something happened. Jim T's muted. I did check, something. Check, check. That was my mistake. You mean Can three you... years. Three years. What did I say? Three months. Three months, yeah. Well, we know that's wrong. Three it years, seems baby. a lot longer, doesn't it? I don't know how three years went by already. Oh, my gosh. Something I look at, happened. I look at pictures of me like at Nash Bro or when you came down, and uh, I have I actually have a picture of us that time you came down to Hobby Lobby and we flew uh, yeah. for the, with the Pro Bros. And, uh, man, we were just, I was like 30 or something, you know? <laughs> Crazy. I was a little baby. How time flies, right? Hey, all you live people, there's a QA and a button. You can ask us a Q or an A, but I believe you have to be on the Google Hangout page to do that. It's uh, Technology will get better, and you'll be able to interact with us more. Nikolai is on, as we can see, although we haven't heard a peep from uh, Mean Joe Vermillion. No, nah, he, peeped, he peeped over on, my, on the um, Google chat side, like hitting me. He basically said... When you were talking about uh, the guy outside your window, uh -huh. he said, I got your back, Jim. Don't make me release Mean Joe. <laughs> nice. uh, you know how he rolls. Do you see how I hung an airplane on the wall for the show today? Oh, yeah. So what I'm saying is, is airplanes will hang on guitar hangers. Looks good. It, it has its place up there. I'm digging it. Yeah. All yeah. right, fellas, I'm calling you out. Uh-oh. I want to race you. 
And the only feasible way, besides doing online multiplayer in real flight, to race you guys is for you all to get tiny whoops, because as my title says, I'm still tiny whooping. Yeah, uh, we see that. <laughs> and when we're all together later this month up in Oshkosh, staying in a house, we will set up a tiny whoop race course and do some FPV racing. Now, I've got... I just don't want to build one of these darn things. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I've got one of these. And I will bring it if I haven't sold it by then that somebody can fly mm -hmm. if they have a Spectrum radio. If they don't want to pony up the tiny whoop. Did What's you just get that? No, I've, I bought that a while ago. I bought it at so, the hobby store on my way up to the Louisville Cave Race. So All the guys wanted to fly in the house up there. We're all meeting Jim Burke at Oshkosh in the RC Group's house, and I'm assuming Jim's flying up in his extra. And Jason and I are theoretically flying up in a Fairchild, what was it, a 21 or something? Something like that. I, I have it on. It's, yeah, it's not likely, but it could happen. Okay, so uh, let's go with the Fairchild not likely. 71, Fairchild 71. 71, yes. And it. when I saw the picture, I thought, oh, my God. I don't know if I feel uh, okay flying to Wisconsin in that airplane. Google it um, if you want to see what it looks like. Here, I've got it. Uh, where'd it go? Uh, it's the blue and white one. Hold on a second. Oh, I found it here. Let's uh, let me share screen real quick. Yeah, probably good. Hold on, here we go. All right, let's see. Share screen, full screen, blah blah blah. Okay, there it is. Hey, there's Mean Joe. <laughs> he made it. He made it. Wait, oh, what's that? That's the creek. -cree. <laughs> That's the plane you guys were flying up in. <laughs> I kid. I kid. <laughs> I, I would fly in that. I would, too. Oh, my God, I'd be all over this plane. So much fun. Do you, know you know that Bill Hempel's, uh, even Bill Hempel's not biggest plane is bigger than this? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so, Matt, it's at least 10 hours for us, and we're debating on whether we're taking an airplane like Southwest or if we're going to drive in the big black truck. And if we take an airplane, we have to land 100 miles away, rent a car, and then drive another 100 miles to the house. So I ended up doing, doing Delta, and I am flying into Appleton Regional yeah. Airport, which is not 100 miles away. It's 30 minutes north, I think. A little more than 30 minutes. So that's what I'm doing. But I yeah, have, a, I have was, a layover in Detroit. Like hundreds of dollars more to fly there instead of Chicago. Is it really? Because oh, my yeah. Delta, I guess from Cleveland it's different. Maybe. Um, Maybe. I'm, I'm taking Cleveland to Detroit. Detroit to Appleton, and it's like a two-hour flight with the layover. So I'm looking forward to that. I have no idea what to expect at EAA AirVenture. Oh, my gosh, dude. Your mind is going to be blown. I looked at the um, the uh, schedule of events. It's like 35 pages. Yeah. And they label every single thing that happens every day. It is insane. The air shows are so impressive, man. We're just going to just sit there and drool. I have mm -hmm. us, uh, thanks to Miss Lisa, some VIP passes for Thursday, and I think I have tickets for everything. I've got to print it all out here. Now, we're going to be there on a Thursday. Are we going to try to do a live hangout for yeah. Oshkosh? Yeah, I was about to say, we're definitely going to bust open a phone and do a live walk around, hopefully amongst some awesome airplanes, so everyone can see what's happening out there. Now, is Jim going to be flying, or is this plane parked for the duration that and not to be flown? That does not come up, but I bet it's he's just going to fly in and fly out. Yeah, because I do want him to take me up and show me some negative G pushovers. <laughs> <laughs> Kidding. And I was in the yak, and uh, all that stuff was good. We were pulling Gs and going inverted and fly and doing uh, point rolls and all that stuff. It was when we had to wait to land, and uh, the the residue of the oil came through the motor and into the cockpit. Oh, man. And it was like my whole inside of my head was covered in uh, V tw or, or twin motor oil. Not twin, yeah. but whatever that oil is. And, and that, that was the thing that nauseated me. 
Well, I'd love to do it. I think that would be fun. But um, I'm excited, man. So, Jason, tell me, what is the going cost all in for a Tiny Whoop? Uh, I'm not sure. I kind of did it in stages. So the Tiny Whoop itself, or the Indutrix, the Blade Indutrix, Bind and Fly is like 49 bucks, you know, 50 bucks. Uh, the motors, I think they're like twenty three bucks for the fast motors. They're Sixty seventy. B- batteries are like five six bucks a piece. Eighty. Um, the camera is I think thirty nine for the camera VTX combo, and that's all you need. One hundred and thirty bucks. Do I need the motors, or can I? If I just show up with a stock one without these motors, are you, you going to be like, oh, there's, are you going to be like, oh, there's no race. I can't even race you. It's going to be embarrassing. No, you will just hate your life because it's terrible with the stock motors. When so you add the weight of already hate stuff, it. it's just. I was going to say, do you hate your life already? A <laughs> <laughs> kid. No, yeah, it's just you really need the fast motors. Um, it's it doesn't fly well or hardly at all. It's almost full throttle. Um, so the next motors. question is: in the wonderful classified ads on RC groups, I wonder if there are any turnkey tiny whoops. I've seen a few uh, be listed. Mm-hmm. Um, it happens every now and then. I don't know why people sell those things. They're probably crazy. They're, gonna, they're, crazy. they're probably going to get a divorce because they fly to, into their wife's uh, shower while she's showering. I, it is some of the most fun I've had. I mean, I I, <laughs> I fly it every day. I'll go into the bedroom, around the bed, under the bed, downstairs, around the living room, through chairs, and just I, it's just a blast, man. All right. Okay. I'm feeling it. I'm starting to feel it. I haven't been on board with it really until right now. Literally right now, yeah. I'm starting to feel it. You will, you will thank me later. I guarantee it. I put a, I'll buy it from you. If, if you, you don't, don't like, like it, it. it's yeah. a Jason uh, guarantee right there. <laughs> it's my battery life. Uh, I was getting about four minutes and forty seconds on a two hundred milliamp hour lipo, and I've, I've just set my timer for four minutes now just to play it safe. How about distance? And I don't, not that that's a big question, but if I was to go outside because uh, there's uh, some parks near my house, there's walking trails through the woods, and they're nice wide trails, but they have trees all around. Yeah. And you can kind of wind in and out. You think I could go part way down one of the trails, turn around? Probably. And come I back? don't know what the receiver range is. It's a, it's a 25 milliwatt, you know, VTX. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's gonna get good range out of that. Um, I just don't know what the. I've never just tested it for the radio range, but. If you use a, a normal radio, like a DX9 or something like I've got, it's going to be longer than like a ready-to-fly transmitter. Low well, i got a DX9 thing. up there. I may, I may yeah. just use that. Yep, that'd be perfect. Good. Awesome, awesome. Okay, I may have to do it. I don't know. It's like, and then we, we can record it. We'll get some DVRs and uh, record our running around the house up there at Oshkosh. So if I get one, I need to pack my transmitter... My uh, goggles. How are you going to bring all that on your airplane ride, Jason Cole? You have to take my truck to this show. Ah, uh, I could get. I could. You telling me I can't get this in some baggage on Southwest? Lithium polymer. <laughs> they yeah, pretty tight. Yeah, you, you carry on your lithium batteries, and that's not even enough lithium. To you know, that it. sounds even. I, I don't want to uh, dissuade lithium polymer travels, but that sounds even worse. No, Carrying what's worse on. is it being in the cargo area of the plane that you can't get to. Yeah, but everything we own has lipos in them, or yeah. is a lithium ion, and that's your phones. Like, yeah, yeah. Don't worry about it. Carry them on. <laughs> uh, no one asked me if I got frisk coming back from Mexico. You know the Mexican <laughs> oh, massage. Oh yeah, you made it back with no instruments. The Mexican massage. I did get. I did get frisked, and I got robbed in Mexico. What? Really? You didn't tell us that. I know. I saved it for the podcast. Like Are you at serious? gunpoint. No, well, it was uh, it was very different than at gunpoint. Uh, I'll try to keep it short. The guy that took us from the airport is an American who knows my mom, big muscles, crazy tattoos, drives a Jeep. He said, I trust no one. And we're like, okay, all right. And so uh, on our anniversary, my wife and I went to this really high-end place spa to get a massage. And I said to my wife, $300 bills in my hand, we should pay them up front. And she said, no, just stick it in my purse. We come back, all the money's gone. Then I noticed that the tree trunk they use as a locker 
the bottoms are hollowed out holes with wood floors and you simply just lift the wood floor up and stick your hand into my locker, pull out all my stuff and then put the floor back in. Oh, wow. So I didn't get robbed at gunpoint. I got robbed while I was being massaged. Well, so, do you think the staff did it? I don't know, man. I didn't accuse anyone of stealing. The guy in the Jeep said he would have called the policia. But I, the last thing I want to do is get involved with the Spanish policia. Yeah, the <laughs> you Mexicans. just saw that guy got beat up pretty bad by the Spanish policia. Well, so, this, is, uh, this is a really nice uh, area. This is like, that wouldn't happen. But anyway. Just, crazy, man. Just saying, that did happen. That's no good. No. Bummer. What other cool stories did I not hear? You had people run by your window that you almost macheted. Money stolen. It's uh, you had any other good stories there, buddy? I'll let you know if they pop up. Okay. I can't believe I didn't tell you all that. Holy cow! I know. Well, we're closing in on an hour. Actually, we are. We just pulled an hour. Pop. Sixty minutes, mm -hmm. and uh, we didn't give the viewers anything, Jason. How about if you go in the Q and A, and what you have to post is your RC Group's username. We'll give you a fifty dollar uh, plus membership on RC Groups. Yeah, Nikolai and Joe don't count. Yes, you guys are out of the running. <sighs> Let's see. Somebody should do this here soon. I'm going to have to call Anderson RC to get this whole uh, marriage thing hey, working. Hey, we did get a new comment here. Hey, please post that Scotch Bright info again, Matt. I yeah, just I caught the at... tail end of that and have been looking for such a thing for my people. Uh, it's, it's wonderful stuff. Wonderful, wonderful stuff. So it is B-M-S-C-O-T. I looked it up and couldn't find it. I found Scotch Pads. Yeah, I know. Um, I'm going to look this guy's on. username up. He may win the uh, the prize. Okay, so I'm pulling it up right now. Hold on one second. Member search. Hey, I also wanted to say we have a lot of people that listen to our podcast. A lot. Thousands of people listen to our podcast. And uh, I would really love to get that is not a username on RC Groups. So uh, it says it is. I'm looking it up. But, okay. Uh, okay. I would yeah. love to get a lot of people watching our video cast because I think <clears> – <throat> just as much fun as a podcast and maybe even more fun. So spread the word is what I'm trying to say. And if you have any questions or anything that you'd like us to address, or to air, anything you want us to talk about, shoot any of us a PM via RC Groups, Flying Giants, whatever, and we will talk about it on the next week's podcast. Our video. So Deep Zone 9. Um, doesn't look like that is an RC Groups account. So maybe that's not your RC Groups username or it's under something else. But if you've got one, let us know, and we can get you that plus membership. But I can't do it if you're not a user. Okay, so I would like to apologize. I said Scotch Bright. It's Scotch Guard. So oh. that is where I screwed up, and that's why you can't find it. It's <laughs> 3M Scotch Guard, G A R D, not G U A R D, and it's called um, 3M Scotch Guard Paint Protection Film. It's six mil thick. And it's an awesome rubberized coating that you can put on the bottom of. Uh, I got mine on eBay. So if you go on eBay, there you are. Yeah, it's. Um, Does it come in any other colors? Because no, uh, it's completely clear. It's designed no color version. Yeah, it's completely clear stuff. And um, I got mine from Easy Auto Bra. I think it's called. Uh, it, which is just a. Wow. Yeah, which is just a. Uh, eBay seller. So pick it up off of eBay and you have to sort of look. So if you're looking through there, there'll be deals just like anything on eBay and, and Amazon. There's deals hidden inside of all the crap where they try to rip you off, you know. So you'll see it for He's 20 our, bucks. Sorry. Huh? Um, so you'll see, you know, 20 bucks for 6 inches by 24 inches. But if you just look around, you can find the 20 bucks 6 inches for by 50 inches, which is what this is. This is enough to cover like three or four, five, six planes. I mean, literally, depending, all you want to do is put a piece on the bottom and maybe one out on the wingtips. 
And if you're feeling gamey, you can put some on your body and just run and slide through. Oh, uh, I can feel only, only imagine peeling this stuff <laughs> off of your chest. <laughs> hey, Jason, was he already a Plus member, or are you so dang uh, fast? If he's not, if he wasn't, he is now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Another year, it's done. Yep. Congratulations, a new <laughs> Plus member, $50 discount, well, cost. Yeah. Hey, next week we're going to talk about the real story behind how Mean Joe Vermillion got the name Mean Joe. We have the actual event. We where, talked about it on live already. Last no, but I have the real story about uh, him being super mean at this one thing. And, oh, yeah, uh, that one. Yeah, we decided to keep that out on purpose. I'm glad you're going to talk about this. Yeah, I uh, made some notes, <laughs> and we're going to go over Mean Joe. Also, uh, we're going to talk about how Matt Gunn got his last name, G-U-N-N. Mm -hmm. It's did a, you know I'm a son of a gun? <laughs> <laughs> and did you know that I am literally a redheaded stepchild? <laughs> really? Yeah. I, I read a story about Ray Wiley Hubbard, and he said when he met his wife, she, she sauntered by, and he said if she got lucky, she could be Mother Hubbard. <laughs> what is defined sauntering by? He said that she walked by like a <laughs> dancer. Oh, what was that? <laughs> that was a ta -ching. That's what that was? I thought a car crashed outside your window. <laughs> Did you smash the screen? Because <laughs> the iPhone 7's coming out, and you need to do something to get rid of that one. Oh you got a <laughs> fart machine on there? <laughs> That's what that one. Musical farts. Okay. Oh, uh, where, where, where are we going there? Ladies and gentlemen, banter. <laughs> now, uh, as soon as I hear the fart, we're going to stop the broadcast because we... <laughs> Thanks for watching the RC Group's live hangout. Thank you, guys. I'll talk to you next week. Toilet humor. Bye.